Hello there, very good evening and welcome to another edition of Primetime News on TV1. Let's start off with a look at your top stories for tonight. Inter-provincial travel restrictions to be imposed from midnight tonight. Vaccination drive of the Chinese Sinopharm vaccine expedited. Russian vaccine administered to the public in several places in the country. Samagijana Balavege launches support campaign in the battle against COVID-19. Stop the emergency passing of the Port City Economic Commission Bill. Opposition requests from the Mahasangha. Today is the 11th of May 2021. How will travel restrictions apply till the 30th of May? What did the medical specialists tell the President? Will Sri Lankans receive the second dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine? The administration of the Sinopharm vaccine to residents of the Western Province was carried out at 44 locations with the support of members of the Triforces today. State Minister of Primary Health Care, Epidemics and COVID Disease Control Dr. Sudarshini Fernandapulle said that plans are afoot to administer the first dose of the Sinopharm vaccine to 30,000 people daily. The administration of the Sinopharm vaccine was carried out at eight locations in Colombo today. The Russian Sputnik vaccine was administered at the Kotigavatta Rajasingha College this morning. The Russian Sputnik vaccine was also administered at the Kalakatuavatta Temple in Galvana Mulleriava. China's Sinopharm vaccine was administered at the PD Sirisena grounds today. The administration of the Sinopharm vaccine was carried out at selected locations covering every MOH division of the Kaluthara district today. A correspondent reported that inoculation programs were carried out successfully at 18 locations in the Gampaha district today. An inoculation program was carried out at the Kirindavela Central College as well. Meanwhile, inoculation programs were carried out in Mirigama today. What is the status of the second dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine? Specialists in this field have said that there is no issue in getting a different type of vaccine as the second dose. The doctors in Sri Lanka will take a final decision on this matter. So those who have already received the first dose of a vaccine do not have to have any fear of the second dose of the vaccine. According to the information that we have received, certain countries like Indonesia and some African countries have an excess stock of AstraZeneca vaccines and we are holding this discussions with these countries to obtain the vaccines. A similar program is being carried out in France and Germany. They have recommended for people who received the first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine could be given the second dose with the Moderna vaccine if they are below the ages of 55 and 60. In the UK, if a person who received a certain vaccine goes to get the second dose and that specific vaccine is not available, a different type of vaccine can be given. The CDC in the US has said that they do not recommend a similar program. However, if there is a requirement, a different type of vaccine can be used as the second dose. The Sputnik vaccine is also like a mix and match. The issue here is we do not have the details of the tests conducted by mixing these vaccines. We haven't still done anything like that yet. There is some research ongoing. None of the research results are out yet. There is no decision to implement a program like that. The Epidemiology Unit of the Ministry of Health stated that 1,225 new COVID-19 cases were identified today. This brings the total number of COVID-19 cases in the country to 129,755. A three-month-old infant was among the 26 COVID-19 deaths that were reported last night. According to the Government Information Department, the deaths were reported between the 3rd of May and last night. As of now, 827 patients have died due to COVID-19. Meanwhile, the Minister of Health says that 1,030 patients recovered from the virus. Today, this brings the total number of COVID-19 recoveries in the country to 106,614. How will travel restrictions be imposed? 
commander of the Sri Lanka Army, General Shavendra Silva, said inter-provincial travel restrictions would be in effect from midnight tonight till the 30th of this month. Army commander also said travel restrictions within provinces might be imposed, taking into account the rising COVID-19 numbers in the country. Other Madhya Maratri Sita Kriatmakana Paridi, Palat Tatara, Sancharne, Sima Kiri Matakatukala Tibeno. Interprovincial travel restrictions have been imposed for midnight today. That restriction will be in effect from midnight today until midnight on the 30th of this month. This will not be applicable to frontline health workers and the essential workforce. The Director General of Health Services will inform us in writing as to what services will fall under the essential services category. If we detect a rapid spread within the district, we will take steps to impose inter-district travel restrictions as well. The restrictions on travelling between provinces will come into effect from 12 midnight. Provincial borders will be closed for non-essential travel. Especially trips or other excursions, lodging at hotels and visiting family and friends cannot be done. You cannot cross provincial borders for these reasons. We will deploy police officers, members of the army and the special task force to all provincial borders. Essential services will continue to operate. From 12 midnight today, all leave of police officers will be suspended until the 31st of this month. Will inter-provincial public transport operate from today? We have limited the operations of buses with the decision taken by the government. Although a limitation has been imposed, a small number of buses will be in operation for essential services. Buses will not stop while travelling through an isolated area. We will limit the operation of buses along highways because those buses will operate only for essential services. Trains will ply to Alutgama along the coastal line, to Kochikade on the Putlam railway line, to Ambepusa along the main line and to Avisavella along the Kalani Valley railway line during morning hours and evening hours for essential workers. Trains will operate to Mathura, Gaul and Kendi as well. However, our long distance operations will be halted from tomorrow. Trains carrying cargo will also be suspended. What were the areas that were isolated today? Six Gramaniladari divisions across four districts were placed under isolation with immediate effect today. Accordingly, the areas under isolation are as follows. Uyanwatha Gramaniladari division and the Uyanwatha North Gramaniladari division in the Mathala district. Udahapuita Gramaniladari division in the Rathoda police jurisdiction in the Mathale district. Tibuta village and the Koskastana village in the Valgampaya Gramaniladari division in the Kaduganna police jurisdiction in the Kandy district and Madakiri Matiana or the Kosata Police Jurisdiction in the Putlam District. Meanwhile, the Nikadalupata Gramanildari Division in Kurunagala was released from isolation. What is the reason behind the decision not to place the country under lockdown? The easiest way to bring the virus under control is to place the entire country under lockdown. Unfortunately, as you know, the economic situation in the country during the five-year period between 2014 to 2019, the per capita income in the country has increased only by 33 US dollars. This is about six dollars per year. The economic development in many countries across the world was negative last year, but those countries were able to bear the impact as they had strong economies. But the economy in our country had collapsed and in 2019, our economy grew by only two percent. The government has to now control the spread of this pandemic amidst this pressure. Therefore, unfortunately, we haven't been able to take the extreme measures that were taken by some of these wealthy nations with strong foreign reserves. What is the latest opinion of medical specialists? Yesterday, the president held a lengthy discussion with the Sri Lanka Medical Association, the Government Medical Officers Association and medical specialists regarding the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic in the country. The associations of the stance that strict travel restrictions must be imposed. It is only two weeks after a patient is infected with the virus that they begin to show symptoms of the virus and it is only then after receiving treatment for about two weeks that they pass away. Therefore, the deaths that are being reported now are of the patients who were initially infected about a month ago. So during the next three weeks or so, there is a possibility that the number of cases in the country will increase. We informed the President and the Cabinet of Ministers 
ministers regarding this matter. The UK variant that is currently spreading in Sri Lanka was not detected in the first or second wave. This variant is spreading fast. Also, there are delays in getting the results of the PCR tests. So by the time we receive the results of the PCR tests and identify the infected person, he or she has already spread the virus to many others. So because of that reason, we stressed that this situation cannot be controlled by placing small Gramaniladari divisions under isolation. By the time all this is done, this new variant would have spread to a large area. 25 to 30 deaths a day would mean that about 250 people would die across the span of 10 days. Just calculate and see how many people would die during a single month. These predictions are based on the numbers that exist now, but there is a massive uncertainty on how much these numbers will increase in the future. It is pointless to panic only when a person you know or one of your close contacts or a relative dies. This is a very decisive time. You must be vigilant. Do not try to close the stable after the horse has bolted. The danger faced by people with underlying medical conditions. According to the details available when you analyze the last 593 deaths, 46% of them were diabetes patients, about 46% of them had high blood pressure. We can see a clash of two pandemics. Both a communicable disease and a non-communicable disease are spreading here. According to the statistics from other countries, people suffering from diabetes, obesity, high blood pressure and other underlying conditions have a higher chance of dying from COVID-19 than the rest of the infected patients. The possibility of blood clotting after contracting COVID is extremely high. About 50 patients in a million could suffer from blood clots in the brain and other parts after contracting COVID-19. But the risk of blood clotting after taking the vaccine is not even 4 in a million cases. Can we expect results from the vaccination program? We informed the authorities that even after being vaccinated, it takes about three months for the immunity to form and that this is not possible soon. So right now, we would like to state that vaccines are not a solution to the primary problem that we are facing right now. Meanwhile, Army Commander General Shavendra Silva said all liquor and wine stores must close daily from 6 p.m. onwards with effect from today. 10,000 hospital beds in 10 days. Minister of Sports and Youth Affairs Namal Raj Baksa inspected the progress of the ongoing 10,000 beds in 10 days program in Dolua Gampala today. The minister also inspected the affairs carried out at the Vahugupiti Hospital in Pusarlava and the Youth Core Centre in Gampala, which are two new COVID-19 treatment centres. Thereafter, the minister inspected the manufacturing of beds at the Ulpane Youth Centre. Minister Namal Rajapaksa, who inspected the manufacturing process of beds at a state-owned factory in Kolonava, and he said at the Automobile Engineering Training Institute that a digital vaccination ID will be introduced in relation to the inoculation program. COVID vaccination, digital ID. We will introduce a digital vaccination ID and that will help us to track the dates and the times people have been vaccinated and to carry out a review after the vaccine is administered to the people. They say that apart from the beds installed, the rest will be provided by the Treasury. But we very responsibly state that this is being done with the donations of the wealthy. These beds are for the general public. However, for those who are in a critical condition and require oxygen supply, you need high dependency unit beds to supply oxygen. A program is underway to collect 800 HDU beds. The Podujana Engineers Front have initiated this. By tomorrow, we will implement a program to give away 650 units with 50 beds each for 13 hospitals. By Monday, we will reach the target of 1,000. We have to decide the number of beds we need, how many intensive care units we need, the pharmaceuticals we need and how we should maintain the oxygen capacity at hospitals. What should not be done is to increase the capacity and the number of beds without a proper understanding. That should be done on a scientific basis after gathering the relevant data.
There is no proper methodology to provide the necessary facilities to those beds. There is no methodology to assign the relevant staff to those beds. In plain words, we have no way to treat the patients who are admitted to those beds. We have to take steps to prevent people from dying. For that, there is no need of manufacturing beds. That is done just for the trend. The plan to stop the spread of the virus has failed. Attention should be focused there. During the first wave, the government started cultivating vegetables. They distributed the herbal tonic during the second wave. Now they are acting the part of manufacturing hospital beds during the third wave. People dying on the bed or dying on the ground is not the issue. What is the opposition doing? A program to combat COVID-19 by the opposition was prepared under the patronage of opposition leader Sajid Premadasa. Under this program, essential medical equipment will be donated to hospitals. As a people-centric opposition, we hope to launch a program to protect and save the lives of the people of our country. We are dedicated to conduct this program through donations received from the ministers, organizers and hundreds of thousands of members of the Samagi Janabala Vega as well as the large international network that the Samagi Janabala Vega has. As a new party that suits the current times, we will not simply stand by while criticizing our opposition. We are a strong party that can contribute to solving this problem even in a minor way. <laughs> The stance of the opposition activists. When the virus was rapidly spreading across the world, in Sri Lanka it was discriminated based on colours and religions. They let everyone act however they wanted and celebrate the Sinhalese and Tamil New Year. But now they have informed that we cannot celebrate Pesak. Imagine what would have happened if this situation arose during someone else's religious ceremony. On the 8th of April, the medical unit of the University of Sri Jayavardhanapura officially informed the government that the UK variant of the virus had entered the country. However, the government let people celebrate the Sinhalese and Tamil New Year without any restrictions on movement. They even distributed 5,000 rupees to celebrate Aurudu. But what has happened now? The Muslims cannot even engage in religious observances at mosques. Also, the Buddhists cannot and will not be able to celebrate Vesak. Recently, I raised the question in Parliament and before the media about the COVID-19 fund and the 1,360 million rupees we received. It has been a year since we received this money. Did they purchase beds? Did they distribute these beds among the hospitals? Did they purchase medicines and vaccines? I saw the government doing nothing for a year. However, yesterday, they said that the 1,360 million rupees are being used for vaccination. We are pleased to know that even after a year, the money given by those who can afford are directed to the vaccination process instead of investing it on tonic. Meanwhile, no COVID-19 deaths have been reported from the United Kingdom during the past 24 hours. COVID-19 deaths were reported daily in the UK since the 30th of July last year. Only four COVID-19 deaths were reported from England yesterday. In the UK, 112,254 people have died owing to COVID-19, while the total number of cases reached 3,876,000, with a daily record of 2009. We now cross over to a short commercial break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back on the other side. Welcome back to the news. What is the reason for the lack of fertilizer in the market? The following is the view expressed in this regard at the cabinet media briefing that was held today.
State Minister Mohan De Silva said the total fertilizer requirement during this season for paddy and other crops is 385,000 metric tons. The fertilizer imported by two main companies is more than enough. These companies are providing 250 metric tons per day. However, there is a shortage in the market as some individuals purchase larger stocks of chemical fertilizer to sell at higher prices in the future as they fear a shortage of fertilizer in the short run. A massive contradiction could be seen between statements provided by authorities and the reality at ground level. Farmers in many parts of the country are still lamenting over the shortage of fertilizer. Those living in Rajagalathanna and Nugelanda under the purview of the Maya Dunnagovijana Centre in Ampara are severely affected by the lack of fertilizer for their cultivation. According to the farmers, around 2,000 acres of farmlands have been impacted. No solutions has been given although this matter is discussed. So all the members of the farming societies have decided to resign from our positions and give up on our responsibilities. Although the authorities have been informed in this regard, the farmers are yet to receive a solution. The farmers' only request is to provide an immediate solution to the matter. Farmers in Kantale, Sinipura, Minipura and Agbopura are also facing numerous difficulties owing to the fertilizer shortage. Crops including brinjal, chili and tomato have been abandoned due to the lack of fertilizer and pesticides. <laughs> Farmers in Bakamuna that come under the purview of Kuruviaya Farmers Association have sown 300 acres of paddy fields. However, they have not been given the urea fertilizer required for the yellow farming season. <laughs> News First, the voice of the people. Leader of the Jantha Vimukti Peramuna, Andra Kumar Desanayaka, spoke about the current situation in the country at a media briefing held today. What is the stance of the Janata Vimukti Peramuna? This is not a terrorism related incident. Even President Gotabe Rajapaksha admitted it. Although he understood that this is not a terrorism related issue, he acted as if it was. The heads of the health sector were supposed to lead this operation. But what did they do? They appointed other people as heads of this program. Now this program has crumbled. Do any citizens in the country believe the information and details released by the government? This is a breakdown in the system. The Minister of Health announces one thing. The State Minister for COVID-19 Control says something else. The Minister of Pharmaceuticals says another thing. The Minister of Internal Affairs says something different. The Army Commander says another thing. The Head of Epidemiology says something else. The Director General says something else. What is the meaning of this? We needed 28 million doses of the vaccine. But besides the vaccine that were received as a donation, the government was able to purchase 500,000 vaccines. It has been over six months. Have they passed? No, they have failed. Is this vaccination program proper? Did Sri Lanka vaccinate people according to priority? Some people were given the vaccine at home. Some get the vaccine after making a call or sending an address. There was no reference to a province or a district. The minister would get a text message and he would instruct them to go to a specific location and get the vaccine. The entire inoculation program is in a mess. This has become a business. There was a need not to allow the corrupt businessmen around the president not to try to make profits from the current situation in the country. Politicians must prevent these. Members of this corrupt business cycle around the president were allowed to import antigen test kits to the country without proper approval. They monopolized this. They converted PCR tests into a business. They made a business out of quarantining Sri Lankans coming from overseas. They also made a business out of the repatriation program. 
Udayanga Viratunga was not only a relative, but a person involved in several other incidents brought down Ukrainian people into the country. Certain factions have warned that the UK variant of this virus may have entered Sri Lanka through these Ukrainian tourists. The sources of these reports are coming out now. When the virus was spreading in India and when every other country in the world was taking steps to protect their countries from this variant, what did the corrupt business cycle around President Gotabe Rajapaksha do? They publicized packages for Indians to quarantine in Sri Lanka for a mere 650 US dollars. These Indian people who had contracted the virus were reported from these quarantine centers. What should be done now? We need political leadership to face this pandemic. We need collective political leadership. At the very beginning, we asked for parties of the opposition to be involved in this. But if they don't want to get the opposition involved, at least get the parties in the government involved. There are two former presidents, former health ministers, who held the position of the deputy president of the World Health Organization. There is a member of the government who is a professor on contagious diseases. If you don't like the opposition getting involved in solving these problems, at least create a collective leadership inside the government. That is the most important thing. Restructure this presidential task force. Consider this as a health-related issue and appoint people like Anil Jaisingha, Pava Palihawadana, Jairwan Bandara to call them to this presidential task force. Then restructure this entire process. Stop playing the fool with others. As a government, inform the people of these details. The vaccine is the final answer to this. So do not allow random people to produce various other cures as and when they want. Don't allow media organization and actresses to promote these medicines to the people. Even now there is something called the Angampurapania and the Karapitiya pill. So you must stop these people. All medicines that are produced must be presented to the Ministry of Health. The government must prevent the promotion of these medicines without proper approval being granted by the Ministry of Health. We must create a broader scientific discussion among the general public. Some people are asking as to if the Chinese vaccine is good. So the government needs to explain. There needs to be a proper program to bring down vaccines. Especially the government must impose strict travel restrictions. The patients and their closed contacts must be identified and the spread of this virus should be brought under control. The government says live with COVID. The government instead must focus on creating a country without COVID. The value of a human life cannot be measured. However, there are instances in our society where the value of human life is diminished to such an extent, raising questions on the presence of humanity in our society. For watching our next news item, our viewer discretion is advised. CCTV camera captured the manner in which a three-wheeler arrived at a fooling station in Morotua and how a feeble elderly person got down from a three-wheeler. While this elderly man was holding on to the three-wheeler, the driver of the three-wheeler attempted to start the engine and drive away. Thereafter, another person who got down from the three-wheeler tried to take the elderly person away while the vehicle was moving. As a result, the elderly person fell on the ground. The CCTV camera in the vicinity captured the manner in which the person who got out of the three-wheeler dragged the elderly person towards the entrance of the fueling station. At this point of time, the three-wheeler is not to be seen and the person who dragged the elderly person had left the location as well. A few moments after, the elderly person dies on the same spot he was dragged to. According to our correspondent, the Moratua chief magistrate had arrived at the location and had carried out the magistrate inquest. The police arrived at the location at around 1.45 p.m. this afternoon and took the remains to the Kalubola hospital. What is the root cause of this tragic incident? Who were the people inside the three-wheeler in question? According to the police, a group of police officers attached to the crime unit at the Moratua police station have been assigned to investigate the incident. What will happen to the Port City Economic Commission Bill that was proposed by the government? The Speaker of Parliament received the special determination of the Supreme Court on the Port City Economic Commission Bill. The opposition alleges that the government is trying to rush the bill through Parliament. A group of opposition MPs today called on the chief incumbents of the Malvatu and Askiri chapters and the Lake Kadikari Theros of the danger in this course of action. <laughs> Karani, the Varai Nagar, Pete Bora, here, our son of me, 
Kadu sally sudu kerana asal agak macam ni terai. Harap mula tiri ni ni bagi berai negara. I heard that the special determination is like a book and that it has about 200 to 300 pages. We believe that this is downright indecent to present the bill in parliament on the 18th and then debate and pass it in parliament by the 19th of May. And that's a wrap of primetime news on TV1 for tonight. For the News First team, I'm Charlotte Benedict with our sign language interpreter for tonight, Brian DeCruz. Until we meet again, take care and God bless.